Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the introduction. And um, I have the honor to present our Swiss Future Farm project that is closely linked to the objectives of the Smart AgriHubs community on uh, digitalization in agriculture. So I hope the PowerPoint is now well visible here. And uh, here at the start here, you get an impression of the environment that we are working in. So uh, we have a rather normal looking landscape of, uh, of the region close to the Swiss Alps, uh, where we are working on the Swiss Future Farm. And uh, via the following agenda, I'd like to give you an overview of our objectives and activities. And uh, this means, uh, first of all, our overall object uh, objectives. What are we doing in terms of field trials? Some insights to data management, our mechanization and technology deployment concepts, and how we communicate our results and the experiences that we have made in this real life farming environment with new technologies in agriculture. So, uh, First of all, uh, in the general overview, I'd like uh, to address our organizational framework, which is uh, quite a special one, um, as we are working uh, in a public-private partnership between the regional government, represented by the Agricultural uh, Center Arenenberg, uh, as the representative for a public partner and two industry partners with a GVS Agra, who is a machine a machinery importer in Switzerland for all Echo brands. So this means Fend, Valtra, Messe Ferguson, and uh, Echo Corporation as the manufacturer. And uh, in our neighborhood, there's also the Swiss Federal Research Institute for Agriculture, Agroscope. So we also have a close link to research in our activities. And uh, our farm is uh, a dedicated research facility. And um, we are working here with a farm size of 81 hectares, which is a rather big farm in Switzerland, as the Swiss average is uh, 21.5 hectares. And we are working uh, as a mixed farming operation with arable and grassland farming, but also livestock with uh, dairy cows, pigs, and uh, for research purposes, also sheep and goats. And our location is uh, located in the northeast of Switzerland and uh, Switzerland uh, pretty much in the, in the center of Europe here. And we have good access to our neighboring countries, so southern Germany and, and uh, Austria. Here in, uh, in our farmyard, we have then uh, several buildings that we are using for the purpose of hosting visitors and uh, doing training programs and meetings like our meeting and training room, um, but also a smart farming experience room that we are now planning for a more interactive presentation of smart farming contents. And uh, of course, we have uh, big machinery halls and uh, stable and livestock facilities. And uh, when we are looking at the agricultural structure, uh, we uh, have are clearly working in the structures of small structures of uh, different fields of rather small size, bit, uh, of up to up to six hectares. And um, we, have a, we have this uneven shape of fields, which is typical for um, the region around the Alps here. Looking into the history of the farm, uh, we have quite a, quite a, long, a long history, um, long back to the Middle Ages, when the farm was founded as part of a Cistercian cloister for subsistence agriculture. But uh, later on, after the times of Napoleon, was converted to private ownership, where um, a family was then was running a model farm operation 
already with quite a big size for a farm in the region here. And uh, later on in the late 1960s, the Swiss government acquired the farm and the, far and the agricultural land and set up the Swiss Federal Research Institute for Agricultural Engineering here in these facilities. But uh, later on then in 2017, the Swiss government decided to cut costs and uh, not to continue running the farming operation. So the regional government rented the farm and uh, together with the industry partners, so ECHO and GBS Agra, we then started the Swiss Future Farm project. But what are our objectives in the Swiss Future Farm project? What do we want to achieve? And uh, these are six uh, of objectives that you can see here. And uh, first of all, the most important is, uh, is that we want to create visibility for smart farming technologies to make smart farming technologies more visible, tangible, and understandable for several stakeholders here. These can be our own employees. These can be uh, farmers. Uh, these can, uh, can be the broad public who is interested in understanding this. What is another important topic also for the broad public, for farmers, for everybody active and interested in the agricultural sector is, is sustainability. And here we want to demonstrate resource-friendly, sustainable production pr practices um, that we can achieve by using these new technologies in agriculture. And uh, based on our experiences and uh, the, the results of our field trials, we of course want to do a profound knowledge transfer for employees, for farmers, for all uh, other interested parties in smart farming via visitor programs, public field days and trainings that we are offering on the farm here. Also, we want to support then innovation. So by practical insights from our field operations, from our field trials, from our everyday farm life here, we want to give feedback how to, how to create smart farming solutions that I have a good acceptance by the user by providing good usability, practicability, and um, a measurable benefit for farming operations. And uh, we are achieving this via a cooperation uh, from by a by a public partner and industry partners so that we can buy, bundle our competences here and uh, both use the experiences, the insights in, in educational programs like young farmers education, but also to improve our product uh, as a manufacturer here. And uh, with all these objectives, we want to uh, support a community thought in, in agriculture that we have here a meeting point where different stakeholders can meet and exchange uh, their experiences and address the questions uh, that they have concerning new technologies in agriculture. So what, are, what is our fundament then here? And uh, we, we are explaining this uh, via the three pillars or that we are using here to run the farm operations. And the, these are on the one hand, the machines. So the tractors, the self-propelled uh, machines, also our implement, also the implements. And then very important because it's not very visible, the technology on the machines and the implements, which can be the guidance system, section control, yield mapping and so on, but also the software. So our farm management software, where we are documenting and planning all the, all the field operations, field trials, and that is a pretty much an information storage for everything that we have learned here. And our approach in showing and offering possibilities to learn and to, to get insights here to these new technologies 
is pretty much this pyramid that we do not only want to provide contents that you can can read, but also that you can hear, see, test. And uh, these stages then shall support particularly practical farmers to go from an inspiration over motivation to implementing this at their own farming operation. Because uh, when, you're, when you're just hearing and seeing and reading something, you may have your doubts whether this is too complicated and does this really make sense for my farming operation. But where, when you can come and test something, for example, tractor with these new technologies on it, then you're much, much closer in trying and implementing this at your, at your own farm at home. You're much closer due to implementing this due to the practical experience. And this is at the core of what we want to offer here. So our field trials then aim to show what is the yield increase, what are the input savings, and what is revenue costs, uh, return on investment that is linked to these new technologies. And therefore, we set up uh, field trials under local conditions here to provide a benefit statement based on empirical values. Yeah? So under the local conditions, we are setting up field trials that show how much yield increase, for example, or, or input savings you can generate by using the, the new technologies. And we have uh, different focus areas here. So most prominent, the variable rate, nitrogen fertilization, but we are also working with cover crops. Uh, we are demonstrating and testing herbicide reduced and herbicide weed, uh, uh, herbicide free weed control measures. We are using precision planting technology for the row crops, sugar beet and corn. And uh, our youngest, field of activity is now robotics and autonomy, where we also want to test and demonstrate what is currently possible here. And uh, when we are uh, looking, for example, at the variable rate and nitrogen fertilization trial, this is a multi-year study that uh, has been conducted here on the farm uh, since 2018. And you can access these results in a scientific publication in the journal Precision Agriculture, um, where you can see the results, which pretty much in summary show an improvement of the nitrogen use efficiency of 13% of average. And this is then also pointing at the limits or requirements that the European Union Green Deal is, say, is setting for farmers, um, where everybody will be obliged to undertake steps to reduce fertilizer inputs or to improve then the nitrogen use efficiency for the arable crops and the farming, gener uh, farming operation as a whole. We are also working with uh, cover crops to, um, of course, uh, avoid erosion, to have good coverage of the field during winter time, but also to sequester more carbon and uh, to increase organic matter content in the soils. Therefore, we, we have tried uh, a new field operation called cover crop banding, where we are leaving out then strips where later on uh, in in spring for corn planting, the corn can be directly planted into the cover crop without uh, an additional tillage operation being, being required. So we also want to reduce the number of field passes that are required and thereby um, uh, support soil health by reducing um, soil, soil compaction that is created by too many passes or several passes before planting here. On the other hand, uh, a big topic uh, of interest for, for practical farmers is uh, mechanical weed control. So what can we do, do to reduce chemical inputs here? And we are demonstrating different combinations of implements. And uh, you see them there on the right side of the slide. We are using tine harrow, camera steer, toe, 
to show which combination of field operations is uh, providing then the lowest crop care costs and what the impact on, on yield is, is here that is to be expected. And we can see that mechanical weeding is uh, also quite competitive when it comes uh, to the yield level. Then uh, as a technology that is uh, still widely unknown in Europe, we are using precision planting. So um, uh, planting technology manufacturer from the United States that is part of the Echo Corporation. And here we build a custom machine for European structures, three meter working width, where we are then doing trials with the sugar beets and corn and where we are testing and then showing how machine settings influence crop development and later, later on yield. And we are doing these as multi-year trip trials here on our fields, where we are repeating the same trial, um, trial uh, plan or plot protocol over several years to consolidate the results and later on communicate them, for example, in agricultural press. And uh, the, a very exciting field, a very exciting um, <clears throat> topic for field trials is robotics and autonomy. Also, there's lots of interest in the, in the farming community in which benefit and what, uh, which requirements there are to apply robots uh, in agriculture. And it was a, a a huge pleasure to be able to plant the corn in this year with the Fantxafa robot, with the third generation of this robot. And uh, we have then grown this crop uh, over the entire field season and have done crop measurements to track how this crop stand is developing. And uh, later on also did uh, yield measurements and the results showed that the corn is uh, rather competitive and then in this rather bad year for for corn in our region we could uh, achieve results that are just uh, similar to planting corn with a normal planter here so this was uh, this was a really interesting experience here um, with a new robot and uh, the fundament for doing all this and documenting all this and planning this, uh, this is the data management. And uh, this is an important area of work on our farm. And the big challenge, and many researchers will confirm and have their experiences there, is uh, bringing together data from different formats and programs uh, in a structured way. And this is still something that is rather complex and requires lots of, uh, lots of work. And um, we have set up an ecosystem of different software solutions now to enable this. And this is on the one hand, the documentation of the machine data uh, and the applied amounts on the machine, but also the work time recording uh, beyond the machine, for example, when farm workers are working in the stable. And this is all going then uh, into a central farm management software where we can then um, use these data, analyze these data, or transfer these to other software solutions. As this is uh, rather complex and there are many requirements, particularly when you're combining this to uh, also to livestock farming. Meanwhile, we have set up this data management ecosystem here, which is rather, um, rather difficult to understand for practical farmers. So in our visitor program, we are then showing excerpts or certain aspects of the, of the data management. But unfortunately, reality in data management of a farm with digital tools is still uh, very often looking like this, that you have put uh, need to put in substantial effort to really make connected agriculture work. And uh, hopefully with now more experiences and more users being interested in this field, 
This will then generate feedback that helps to improve and to simplify the solutions, provide more benefit and less effort to get started to digitalize a farm. And uh, as said before, uh, what, is, what is still very, very often complex is to combine livestock farming and uh, the arable and grassland farming in one and the same farm management software um, to have a central, centralized system to work with. Um, now, uh, short, uh, some short insights to our technology concepts. Uh, or mecha mechanization and technology concept. And here it's important to point out that uh, the mechanization should be representative, sh representative for the region here. So we are not using big track tractors, but we are using tractors that farmers can use on their farm at home uh, as they are useful and adapted to the to the kind of agricultural structures that we have here and uh, this should also be replicable like equipment uh, so not a uh, custom machines but machines that you can just buy or uh, get at local dealers when you're interested in in having up-to-date machinery with new technologies and all our machines should be smart farming enabled that we can use them for our field trial and demonstration purposes. And the entire uh, machinery fleet is adapted to a way line plan with 15 meters maximum working width. So we can pre-plan then the way lines uh, for the field trials, for example, uh, and uh, there, thereby have the fundament for our uh, strip trials here and make full use of the capabilities of automatic guidance systems. What is very often not yet understood is that new technology smart farming is not a big crowd of solutions, but uh, there is a starting point that is uh, in many cases using a guidance system and on the guidance system, you can build up with other technologies like section control and uh, then later on documentation yield mapping. And uh, so step by step, you can increase the level of technology employment uh, on, a, on a farm, thereby undergo an evolution of what you're using and which benefits you can achieve by using these new technologies. And uh, this is something that is very important for acceptance of new technologies that first of all, you have an overview of what is available and uh, which technology is building up uh, on, uh, on each other. Uh, so this is the fundament of our knowledge tra transfer program here that by practically applying this on the farm, showing what exists, what benefits are to be expected and what you need to do when you want to implement this on your own farm. So, but uh, how, will, how will future look like or what will be um, technology in the future that is available? As an example here from, uh, from FENT, uh, we have the FENT1 operating environment under development. Uh, with a new onboard driver operator placed with the terminal and joystick that is now available on the new Fent, uh, gener uh, Fent series tractors. And in parallel, we have an office software where an offboard software in, de in development that serves as a data storage and um, documentation solution for um, all data that relate to the machine and the field operations and thereby create a close loop of how to work with data in your farming operation. So this is also uh, intended to be a, sim a simple solution to start um, digitalizing your farm or working with digital data on the farm. 
Another uh, another technology that also already has been presented is the electric tractor. So here we are going from di from the diesel rods to electric drive um, with the Fend E100, they, which has also created lots of interest in the farming community. And uh, another prominent example for what uh, for what farmers would expect of a future farm then is the Fen Xaver robot. Here you still can see the elder generation of this robot. And um, we have now been able to use uh, in this spring the third generation of this robot, what is also an interesting approach when it comes to automization and autonomous technology. Our approach in communication, as this is very, very important then to communicate back. So first of all, we are using all these smart, uh, smart farming solutions in practical application. Then we are putting together these results and the experiences and communicate this within our SFF partnership, but also then to interested stakeholders. And I, thereby, we want to identify and discuss potentials, requirements, limitations that exist when you want to practically deploy and consolidate these solutions in agriculture. And uh, so the purpose is all, always to generate a feedback on, you can, on how you can improve the benefits or, of these solutions for, for farming. And here you can see some impressions from our, our public events and visitor programs. And uh, there you can see um, that, that we have a young farmers education program here on the farm that are able then to use and try these new technologies here. And uh, we also have uh, employee trainings here, but uh, yeah, in the time before Coronas, we also had every year a, a bigger field day for the broad public, where we then have shown different focus topics all around the new technologies in agriculture. Another way of communicating is, of course, uh, publications in press. Here is an example from our mechanical weeding trial um, results from 20. 20, that is now published in the Fend Customer Magazine. And uh, we also have then a short uh, Swiss Future Farm portrait here so that um, readers understand under which conditions these results were generated. Thereby, we want to give an orientation of what is possible and, for example, which yield impact is to be expected when using mechanical versus um, chemical weeding. All our results are also publicly uh, accessible and uh, we are publishing an annual report each year that can be downloaded on our homepage. And uh, there you have, then have a detailed description of the trial setup and uh, what we, which results we, uh, we have generated, for example, concerning then crop development or the yield impact that we have found. So uh, this is published every year in spring around March. And uh, so please feel free to um, visit our website and uh, download this report. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm available to respond to questions that arrive then uh, to the details behind this. So this, uh, this is then um, the uh, here with a closer look at the Swiss Future Farm, I would like then to um, come to an end here. Uh, I hope that this uh, has given you some more insights and understanding of our objectives and activities. And uh, I am I am happy to answer questions that have been arising during the presentation now.